AI coding agents face a fundamental problem. They work blindfolded and don't see how the code they generate actually behaves in the running app. So you'll find yourself in this endless loop of prompting changes, testing the app yourself, and then feedback bugs. Now Chrome just released a new DevTools MCP that is going to solve this. It spins up your app in a Chrome browser, performs actions like a real user, identifies bugs and performance issues, and feeds that back into your coding workflow. In this video, we will set up this MCP and run a live test with the top three use cases that will massively improve your coding process. So the gap over here is essentially these coding agents just have access to your code base. They try to edit the code and try to imagine how will it perform and look like in the actual spin up app without actually seeing it. And then taking its best shot, making these changes without actually seeing, okay, what is happening over here in the front end of the app. Now the Chrome MCP tries to solve that by giving your AI agent essentially this capability over here. So it will still go ahead and make changes to your code base, but the workflow doesn't end here because through the MCP, it can access and spin up the development browser, click through everything, read through all the network tab, how does it perform, how does it load, and then feedback into your coding workflow. And then you can basically have a self-improving loop that just finishes if the feature is really implemented as you wanted it to be. The Chrome MCP gives us a bunch of tools that the coding agent can call. It can perform basically any user inputs, navigate through your app and access all these development tools. That's why it's called DevTools MCP that you also find in your consoles. Now, if you have already worked with Playwright before, you might ask yourself, okay, how does this new Chrome DevTools MCP actually differ? Because you're right, Playwright does a lot of what the Chrome DevTools MCP can do, but the main benefit shine because this is really developed by the team of Chrome. So the browser that potentially 90% of your users are going to use. And over the past days, I've tested both of these tools. I must say the performance of this MCP is much better. Like how this data is actually interpreted, how it's being accessed. It feels much more native. For example, for Playwright, you would also need to install a extension to actually work. For the Chrome MCP, you don't need to have an extension at all. It really works native within the browser. And I also recognize this doesn't clutter up the context window as much if we compare working with both. The installation of this MCP is also very easy. It's completely for free. You don't need any API keys or anything. You can essentially just copy that and paste it into Cloud Code. They also have instructions for cursor and codecs. If you prefer that one, I will go ahead and link the GitHub repo with all the installation instructions below the video. So to set it up, just copy this part and bring it into your mcp.json. If you already have an MCP server, of course, you need to just add it below. And a quick tip for Cloud Code, if you don't want to approve every single tool calling, you can just ask Cloud Code to take all the tools of the Chrome DevTools MCP and add it into your allow list. So let's go ahead and actually test this. I am going to work with Cloud Code here, but as I said, it works with any coding agent if you prefer Codex or Cursor. I'm also going to start the development server. And once it's up and running, I'm pasting open up localhost 3000, the login page with the Chrome MCP. And then you already see it spins up the Chrome browser over here. Now this works with your installed Chrome browser. And I tried to go to the login page, but I'm already logged in. Now this is actually an advantage because it uses the cookies from the browser you're working in. And I'm already logged in into my own app here, of course. Let's move this part to the left. So let's clear this up. And I now want to go ahead and test out my favorite use case number one, and that is implementing a feature and then letting it review through the MCP and feeding that back in. So I have this app over here, which is just a side project of mine, creating a little task app over here. And when the user presses C on the keyboard, we have this pop up to enter a task. You can have a date selected, you can have an estimate selected and you select the project. And what I wanna do is if I select something over here, I want to automatically jump into the next path. So it's easier through the tab, I select something, it should go to the next one automatically. Right now it does not do that. So I wrote a prompt that essentially just does that. And after my feature request, I say afterwards, test out the feature, including task creation with the Chrome MCP. I'm gonna accept all edits and let's see how that works. So this is just a regular coding workflow over here. It goes to your code base and finds the relevant files and then goes ahead and implements the new feature and afterwards will test it.
All right, feature implementation is finished. It's now calling the DevTools open new page. It takes a snapshot to view the current state and then analyzes, okay, what should I do next? Fills in the task. Now it opens up a dropdown. Let's see if that works. Select an input. Yes, and that automatically opened up the next tab over here. I didn't do anything. All of that is running on autopilot. And also in the thinking process, you see I just typed tomorrow and the date picker pressed enter. Now I need to wait a moment to see if the estimate picker opens. And then after it performed the action, it thinks through it again. Great, I see that the feature is working. When I selected a date tomorrow, the date drop down closed and the estimate picker automatically opens. So perfectly working in the first shot. I was a bit hoping that we see an error in the first version of it. So it can go ahead and iterate by itself, like see the whole flow and then go ahead and go back into implementing again, working on the code base again with its insights and then spin it up again. But this one worked one shot. Now my second favorite use case of this Chrome MCP is analyzing the performance. And again, that's something your coding agent can do by just looking at the code base and trying to think of, okay, how would this load in the front end? Or what's actually better is spinning up the real app and opening up the network tab over here. If we reload the page, that's a useful dev tool over here by Chrome where we see the real app, how does it actually go ahead and load everything? What script is it loading? And we also see the time in milliseconds that this takes on loading. And this is again, a super useful insight that is impossible to get just by looking at the code base. So I'm pasting my second prompt over here, which will be, I want to improve the loading time of the today page, run a full performance analysis with the Chrome DevTools MCP and suggest improvements. Let's run it. So we see the plan over here, it starts performance trace, then analyzes the core web vitals and performance metrics, reviews the network requests, and then identifies the performance bottlenecks and insights, and lastly, providing us the optimization. So it already goes ahead into work over here. It started the performance tracing, reloaded the page, and now we see it's calling the tools to analyze those performance insights. It finishes the analysis and already gives us over here what needs to be optimized, and it reports back in milliseconds what takes so long to load and how can we optimize it. Now I see I'm in edit mode over here, so it doesn't just suggest us the plan, it already goes ahead and integrates that. But this is just another example of how this loop over here can now run on autopilot. So make changes to the code base, run the actual app, analyze those changes, and then again, make changes until we fully have our desired outcome. So back in the coding process, I see that it has run the performance analysis again after doing the changes, and we're presented with the performance improvements. So not huge improvements, but between us, this is a new app. It was not loading slow. It was actually already quite fast, but it still managed to do some improvements. And especially if you have a well-matured app with a large code base, this can be super useful. I'm going to clear this up again so we can come to my favorite use case number three and that is analyzing your app for performance issues and that is again something that you could do just by looking at the code base but you will never have the real insights of what is actually being exposed to the user if you don't take a look at the real app that's out there so i'm using my third prompt over here which will be use the chrome mcp to open up a local host and expect for exposed secrets or sensitive data visible in the dev tools. Record findings with a security report and suggest improvements. And this time I'm just switching to plan mode and running this. So this is a new app that I haven't performed any security checks here. It already says it found an exposed API key in the console. So this will be exciting. All right, so finishes up the security report. So we see in the finding, the Anon key is exposed. Now, as it correctly suggests over here, we want the Anon key to be exposed, but we should use proper RLS policies over here. It finds some JWT bearer tokens. The user data is in the cookies. Maybe we want, want to rethink that. And we have some missing headers over here. And based off that report is going ahead and suggesting a security improvement plan. So again, very useful insight that potentially we wouldn't have found just by looking at the code base. So these were my top three use cases of working with your app and working with the code base. But I want to add, you are not limited over here of just working inside of localhost or just working with your own app. You can fully access any other page in Chrome. You can ask it to run competitor apps and 
analyze them, or even automate tasks inside your browser, like writing emails, adding new appointments. And to demo this, I have a secret prompt over here that you should perform to improve your coding performance. <laughs> Let's watch this one in action. Oh, it is not able to perform this action because it is not signed in to YouTube. But I hope when you perform this prompt, you're signed in. So that wraps up the Chrome DevTools MCP. Let me know down in the comments what is your favorite use case. And if you want to learn what my other top five MCPs are, little hint, the Browse MCP got replaced by this one, then go ahead and check out my latest video over here. And if you want to learn AI coding yourself and build your first app, go ahead and check out my Builders Club course and community where I will guide you through everything from just an idea of an app to your finished product and launch. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.